How's it going everyone? Malna Spider here, bringing you another episode in the Pokemon TCG. So, today's episode actually came about whilst I was doing the uh, update video for the year. If you want to watch that, the card for it will be above my head right about now. So, what today's video is going to be about is playing aggressively with Towering Heights. Um, I know it sounds a bit of a odd one, but Towering Heights, the mechanics behind Towering Heights can lead you towards playing very defensively, very slowly, and playing for the late game. And it's a trap I've fallen into many, many times. And I found myself playing very slowly with this deck. However, when I was playing with this deck yesterday, I found that you can actually play very aggressively with it. Now, I've gone for a very different start. As you can see already, I've instead of playing with Persimian as my first active Pokemon, which I would usually do, I actually went across and started off with Groudon. And now the reason for doing that is that I'm really hoping for a switch. And unfortunately I didn't get one. Now, the reason I say that is because what I was hoping to do is Groudon, first turn Drought to power up Thrall, Take hit or two on Groudon, so he's at least got damage counters on him. Swap him out, and then basically throw or do the heavy lifting until another Pokemon comes in. And the reason I say that is because Thrall's got the ability Reverse Shoulder Throw, which is dealing 120 damage as long as you have a damaged Pokemon on your bench. And that's crazy. Getting that 120 damage off on the second or third turn, um, there's very few other basic Pokemon that will be taking that many hits. Now, this does tend to actually work better if you're going second, um, rather than going first, because you can get the first attack off. Uh, but this should still be okay. Um, <clears throat> I am playing against one of the older lightning, actually no, what deck am I playing against? Yeah, this is the slightly old lightning deck. Um, thankfully, I am playing with advantage, because I'm playing in Trumpeton's weakness. So when I say playing very aggressively with this deck, what I mean is not stalling to get damage counters in your bench and playing slowly and building up the Seismitoad and building up into um, your other stage 2 Pokemon. What I'm talking about is playing aggressively is playing for the early to mid game, getting damage out as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, I am still trying to fish for um, a switch which I'm still not getting, which is actually quite unfortunate and might change my plans. Um, I think what I might do is let's get the second evolution out for time pole. So let's get the pop toad out. And the reason I'm doing this is uh, I want to get pre I want to get essentially board presence as quickly as possible. I don't want to be sitting around waiting. Um, I want to put pressure on my opponent as quickly as possible because I know I don't want to give my opponent time to set up. This Towering Heights deck, it's actually got a lot of damage that can come out early to mid game. And ironically, I really, really, really want this uh, Poipole to hit my Groudon for damage. I want my Groudon to get damaged very soon. And the reason I say that is because I want to get only one Trembling Ground off. I want to get Trembling Ground off, and then I want to retreat this ground on, um, so that the Thor can do the heavy lifting, until I can set up with another Pokemon. Um, so I do hope an opponent actually deals damage to me this turn, which is a bit ironic, uh, and it looks like that's not going to be the case, which is a bit unfortunate. But regardless, I do have my Switch. Now this Switch is huge. And the reason I say that is because it allows me um, to get this Groudon out without losing my energy. Um, although I'm still in the case where I might go for Cynthia. Even as nice as that switch is, I wouldn't mind having a fresh hand instead. So we get this throw online. I think I'd actually rather have the fresh hand. It's a bit disappointing. I really was... Ah, and didn't draw into a switch, but I drew into a lily. 
which is very nice so I can boost up with my um, energies. Okay, so let's go for Trembling Ground. It's a bit of a prize card, which is always nice. And I can use Drought or just Hard Switch next turn. Um, again, I really want to try and get into a switch. So basically, the whole... Uh, basically, all the operations you want for this is to start out with Groudon. Use Groudon to power up Thrall to make sure you get those two damage counters on him. And if your opponent... Uh, let's go into... Palpatoad. Did not have a... I was going to say, he must have a second energy by Raikou by now. Uh, sorry, the idea I was going for is starting off Groudon down in the field, using Drought on your first attack to power up the Thrall so that he can get his reverse shoulder throw out, and then switching, ideally using a switch or the Titan Leaser, and then swapping out Groudon for Thrall. Now, this is a much quicker start than starting out with the Pissimian. When you start out with the Pissimian and start using Spike Draw, it tends to be a much slower start. Um, you then more likely playing for the late game, getting card advantage. What I tried to do with this game was get board presence as quickly as possible. It didn't work exactly as I hoped, unfortunately, with this one. Um, but I feel like my board and my bench presence is much better than my opponent's. And I'm still sitting with a rather decent hand. Um, and now I've got Thrall online. So Thrall is now dealing damage, uh, dealing 120 damage. So losing this Pulp Toad will not be the end of the world. <clears throat> okay. In terms of energies at the moment, um, the, he doesn't have anything that lost zone yet. I'm, I don't think he has. So he shouldn't be able to knock out my Pulp Toad next turn. So I wouldn't mind getting a second energy on Palpatoad so I can retreat him in case I don't draw a switch card. Um, I don't want to play this Mew just yet. So let's get some more damage off. Uh, yeah, let's get some more damage off. Um, going into a Raikou next. My bench is looking really strong right now. I know there's a lot of damage counters on my bench, um, but I mean, even if I draw into a Seismitoad right now, the pop will be doing quite a good damage in two turns. My Thrall was powered up, dealing 120 damage a turn, and I got, got a fully charged up Groudon, which is huge. So right now I'm feeling very comfortable. I've got a powerful bench, I've got a good active Pokemon, and I've got weakness advantage, which is always very, very good. Now, uh, bit of a dead draw there. Um, might actually start trying to get my second crowd on. So I think this pulp turn might go down. So we try to get ground on going online. Um, I do really want to see a size turn out soon, just so I can start getting my draws fixed. But anyway. So the reason I say it's so important to play aggressively is because Towering Heights has a lot, as I said earlier, a lot of early to mid range cards. And you wanna get that damage out as quickly as possible so that your opponent doesn't have time to set up. Um, if you're looking at one of the top decks at the moment, it's the deck that's running Charizard and Nidoqueen. Uh, I wanna say Fire Resolve is the name of the deck. Um, it's a very prominent deck in the versus ladder at the moment, and it's one of the decks you're coming to contact with most often. And that deck, once it gets set up, is very difficult to beat. So, by playing aggressively, you're able to shut that deck down before it can actually establish itself. Ah, okay, it's about time he went down. I'm a bit sad I didn't get a Seismitoad out, but that's okay. Thor can come in now, start putting in some heavy work. Um, Got another pop out already, which is decent. Let's get that going, and let's go for Thrall. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Thrall, it really is a card I underestimated when I first looked at this deck, and I encourage you to 
think about Thrall. He's actually a very powerful card. Um, he only takes two energy to be throwing out 120 damage a turn. Oh, this just got a bit more dangerous. And the Gundagan Dart. Charging up. Once during your turn, before you attack, you may attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to this Pokemon. Turning point. If you have exactly three prize cards remaining, this attack deals 80 more damage. Fortunately, I'm not going to be knocking him out uh, in one shot. I might want to switch out into Groudon. I don't want to risk this getting charged up. Mm. I think I might switch out. Yeah, I don't want to give him time. Okay. Hopefully I do draw into a switch right now. Just to save me the 2 NG. But I don't think I can risk keeping that around for one more turn. <clears throat> yeah, no, I can't. I'd rather swap out. Okay, that's a draw. Um, Let's get that up there. Uh, let me do this. That's actually not a bad draw. I'm okay with that. Let's retreat out. Dropping the. Uh, I'm gonna swap in Groudon. I want to lose my two fighting energy. And let's go for Tremendous Ground. So, again, I'd much rather go for the aggressive play there. I've got the ability to take out his Pokemon. I'd rather use that ability. I don't want to give him the chance to power up and to get there. I've got the advantage. I want to keep pressing it. Um, and I feel like that's a very important lesson to learn is that when you've got the advantage, use it. Don't let your opponent come back from it. As I said in my previous videos, if you have the ability to close the game, take it. If you've got the advantage, press it. Don't let your opponent get into a position where they can fight the game back from you and they can get back to where they were. So I'm not mistaken, yeah, this is game. So I charge up my Thrall, retreat up my Groudon, and let's close the game. Don't be afraid to close the game. If you see you have the ability to do it, do it. If you see the ability to keep on uh, pressing your advantage, do it. Try, if you've got a deck that can play aggressively, play aggressively. You're not, you're not doing yourself any good by giving your opponent a time setup, unless you're setting yourself up in the same, at the same time. Um, so there you go, that was quite a successful game. It didn't go according to plan, but it still went well, because I was able to keep on the pressure very early. Using Groudon is a very, very big threat. Um, and that game actually using him more offensively and more as a sweeper than a support. Um, and I do find that's a nice... This ground is actually a nice card in the sense that you can play it both very aggressively as your sweeper and you can play it very defensively as your support. Okay. Um, this is going up against the Soaring Skies deck. It's a pretty decent matchup. Um... I'm still not entirely sure if playing aggressively with this deck is better going first or second. I do feel like it's a bit better going second when trying to play aggressively with us. Um, this is not an ideal start. I don't want Thrall to be my first active Pokemon. Least of all when I'm going first. Um, yeah, this is a bit awkward. This is not what I want to be seeing for my start. At all. So this is the one card in, the, in my opponent's deck which is a problem, which is Tornadus. Because Tornadus is resistant to fighting. And he deals pretty decent damage. Um, thankfully, you can stop Thunderous Tornado with Mew. Oh, come on. Okay, let's see how can I do this. Um, the thing is, I want to get Gibble and I want to get Time Pole. But I think it might be more worthwhile to actually bring out a Groudon. Mm. 
you will. Or time, Paul. Um, let's do that. I think I should have gone for time, Paul, though. Okay, let's swap out Groudon. And let's... Shouldn't be taking too much damage next turn. The problem is I can't actually two hit KO this Tornadus, which is a bit of an issue. Let's drought up my Groudon. Let's see how this goes. Uh, I don't know if that was the right play or not. Um, yeah, this Tornadus is a bit difficult because I've got nothing that can um, one hit KO him. So I'm going to be taking a Thunderous Punch, unfortunately. Okay. Maybe we should have gone for Time Pole instead. That might have been a mistake. Because it takes longer to get a bite online. Ah, that damn resistance. Yeah, um, Tornalis is the one big problem going up against this deck. Because he's such a block on the deck. Um... Yeah, there's no draw I've got that's going to save me here. Hmm. I just need 10 more damage. I really should have gone into Time Pole instead. It was a big mistake on my side. Big mistake. Hmm. Yeah, damn, that was a mistake. Hmm. I don't want to lose Groudon. But now do I want to go into Thrall or do I want to go into Gabite? Because either way, it's two hits. Man, I'm kicking myself now for not going for time pole. Yeah. It's a bit unfortunate. I think I stuffed myself there with that early choice going into Gabite. Um I went into Gabite hoping that I'll be able to get um Guard Jump out sooner. Problem is it doesn't actually help me. I don't have energy. Yeah, because I'll lose him next turn anyway. Just to get a time pot out. Oh, that's frustrating. I'm energy short at the moment. Oh yeah, this up I really draw into an energy next turn. Um, I'm playing from quite far behind at the moment, which is a problem. Damn. No. I'm in serious trouble now. Okay, I do want to get a Mew out, just as that block for damage in case it comes out. And... I'm actually thinking Persimian just for draw. I need a card advantage back. I'm sitting with an empty hand, which is a serious problem. I need to draw, draw into a draw card next turn, otherwise I'm in serious trouble. Serious trouble. I think this might be a loss. Okay, come on, there's a draw card. Okay, that is actually brilliant. I need that draw energy so badly. And it's a switch, which will come in handy later. 
Um, okay, Tornadus is gone. That's the first Tornadus dealt with. I know he's sitting with one more, but this is a very good start, and I'm very happy with it. Okay. Ten Nizo. I've got another switch mechanic, and I've got a, a way to fix my hand. So, this is looking a lot better. Um, I'm still playing from behind. My opponent got a lot of time to set up there, as they're getting their stage ones out already. Sorry, stage two t in terms of lantern. <sighs> no, it's stage one Pokemon lantern. We got lantern out, and they got a dragon there out. Mm. Okay. I've got one more turn with Thrall. Hey, I've got a good draw out there. I actually might switch... I might actually switch Thrall into Palpatode. Just so I can preserve Thor Thrall. Or do I want to free switch in with Palpatode? Hmm. No, I think I'm going to actually go for, for this way around. Only problem is I can't use one more of those earthquakes, otherwise I actually knock out Thrall, which is my issue. Mmm. Damn, and there's the Dragonite. I don't have a way to deal with him at all. Hmm. Hmm. I am not sure how to play this one. I'm playing from so far behind, I actually don't think I can bring this back. I tried playing very aggressively with this, and I just wasn't able to get the answers out quick enough. The problem is that Lantern is going to come in next turn and just knock out whatever I, whatever I do with Thrall. On the plus side, this is a Tornadus is gone, which is great. I'm a prize card up, but I don't think it's enough at this point, because this Thor's about to go down. And I've got Persimian coming in, which isn't dealing a ton of damage. The thing is, I can actually come in with Palpatine and just KO it, because it's weak to fighting. I'm almost going to knock out my own Groudon at this stage. Uh, what to do, what to do. Don't know what the play is here. I'm hoping my opponent just doesn't have the energy for his Dragonite, but I know it's very unlikely. Wouldn't mind a seismitoad. Okay. <sighs> really? You gonna kill me with Dratini's jump on? Let's get some draws going. Let me see if I can find some better answers. Um, at this stage, praying for a seismitoad is my best answer.
Another Groudon doesn't hurt. Okay, let's get this damage off. Let's hope to get a good draw. Now, it would be very nice if I had a, um, a Gibble. Huh. Game is not going according to plan. Damn. Okay. Um. Okay. Problem is he's got a lot of energy at his disposal. Okay, what can we do? What can we do? Um. I can charge up a Groudon, which isn't going to be dealing enough damage to do anything important. So I need, my bet at the moment is playing to Seismitoad. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just see my best bet playing into a Seismitoad right now. Oh, really? <sighs> Why? Mm. Yeah, I need that draw. For one energy, I need that draw. Come on. Ah, I need to see that Seismitoad. I'm loving all this energy, but it's not helping me. It's not helping me at all. Hmm. Okay, if I don't draw a Seismitoad, what are my options? My well, options are getting a Guard Trump out. So I think either way, my next play is bringing in my, my fresh Groudon. I think my next player is bringing in the fresh guard on and seeing what my draw is. Mm. Oh, that's not what I want to see. My issue is he can just this dragon egg can just keep on destructive whirlpooling me and then swap in a dragonite. I think I've lost this one. And things like I've got the option of Cynthia if I really if I really want a hard dig for Seismitoad. But the problem is unless I can deal with this dragon air, Seismitoad doesn't help me. Because I can bring in Seismitoad and it's just gonna get KO'd by Dragon Air. Ah, by Dragonite. Yeah, that's game. I can't deal with this. Damn. Yeah. So this was the case where I was too slow. I just wasn't able to get monsters out. Gibble finally making an appearance. Although I think it's too late. Man, I'm gonna KO my own Groudon next turn. Okay. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I'm just hoping for that Groudon to come in and I'm hoping for a Seismal Toad. That's all I can do right now. Probably my opponent's got so much energy. If he knocks out this Pop Toad this turn, I'm in trouble. I'm in serious trouble. Yeah, I'm in serious trouble. Oh, this is such a frustrating deck to play against because there's just incredible energy advantage. Hmm. Don't think it makes a difference what I do right now. And I say that because you can just swap out into the second Dragon Knight and get the final KO. Yeah, well played. I know that ends it for myself. I wouldn't have lost today. It's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, that was a very tough matchup. Well played to our opponent there. He played that very, very well. He was able to sort out his energy game really well. Um, I think a mistake for me very early on was not taking the time pole. Uh, but yeah, it happens. So as you can see there, I played very slowly and I got punished very badly for it. So with Towering Heights, you can play very aggressively, and I would suggest trying to play a bit more aggressively. Change up your playstyle, try something new, and see what you can do. Um, the potential really is there with Towering Heights. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you did enjoy the video. I hope it helped. I hope you saw something new. And I hope this can hopefully change up the way you play and improve you for the better. Thanks for all the support, everyone.